works. I, anyways, the thing is, I don't know how your mind went when I said flamboyance, because that just means he's got a lot of flair going on. And it's, I don't understand how you even associated anything. I don't, I'm scared how your mind actually works. So much so I'm going to stand up. Ninjas in pajamas <laughs> on the blue team, SK Gaming as the red team, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to get underway for the fourth game of the European LCS week four. You saw lots of games happening on the 4th of July in America. And right now we're having our own little party. It is the European LCS and six games today. And of course, six games tomorrow. Starting off two hours earlier tomorrow though. So don't miss those. We are looking at a potential level one start. Bit of aggression coming out. SK Gaming, they want to get that ward placement out. I definitely want to be able to control, or at least be able to spot where Molino is going to be going here, just to make it so they can farm relatively easy on. And on NIP side, they just wanted to protect their own jungle mostly here. So looks like they were scared a little bit of an invade coming out. Yeah, just simple wards placed around that red buff, both backed away. And actually, Ninja Pajamas didn't get themselves too many wards too deep in. And this time, SK Gaming, they're going up towards the blue buff. They're going for a later invade here. And they're putting a pink ward down, taking away the vision of NIP. They have got a ward on the river, though, just up towards the blue. But now they have really no idea where SK Gaming are going. And that's, that's really scary for NIP side because, I mean, they have a really good team at level one. They have obviously a lot of vision. You have the guaranteed crit out of Candy Panda. So it looks like they're just going to ward it up again. And still, Maluna's going to start at red. So we're going to see about a 330 uh, gank towards the top side of the map. And it looks like SK actually going to go for a red invade here instead. Mm, they are hanging around. There is a ward at the back, though. The back of the red buff. That will give them away. So Ninjas and Pajamas are ready for this. They're going to see it. They're going to realize there's four members in there straight away. And they back away. And it is going to be a blue, uh, red buff, sorry. Pulled by SK Gaming. Are they going to be able to try and steal this one away? No, Maluna's already backed off. He's like, no, it's not worth it. We can't fight for that. And that worked out so well for SK, and they didn't even know it, that's the thing, is that they thought uh, Maluna was going towards blue, was going to start there, but he actually stuck around, he waited. Now he's going to be so far behind in the jungle that Herkibot, if he plays this correctly, should be able to counter a lot of things, maybe invade a little bit, but definitely get some ganks off a little bit earlier and apply a lot more pressure. Yeah, and they see him there, the fact that he's just uh, cleared out that red buff, so he's managed to get the timer reset. Herkibot, meanwhile, he's taking away the blue buff, that's going to go to him. Now double buffed up, see whether he goes out looking for the kills early on. And Maluno, the time, the fact that he was lingering around so long, he's still in the level one. He's going for that blue buff. He's going to make sure he gets that secured, but he is a long way behind already. Yeah, and that means he's actually get relatively low off of this jungle as he's already chugging through those health pots. And Herkibot, I mean, he's going to secure his own red now because he can. I mean, why not? You're, t you're pretty much getting three buffs right off the bat, and you're only giving NIP one. Yeah, straight up. Very good counter. Good start from SK Gaming. We'll see how it develops, of course. Top lane, though, it is going to be Zach versus Elite. It's Elite, that's Extinct versus Kevin. And Extinct, well, he's been all too used to these solo lanes. Of course, used to be the mid laner for Kersey, you, and as well as, uh, I believe, Heimendinger's Colossi as well. I'm not too sure. But definitely going to be an interesting setup for him. He's against Zach here, and Kevin. He is a fantastic solo laner. Yes, yeah, he definitely is. He, honestly, in my book, he's probably one of the top, or actually, we'll be pretty high up there, but it looks like Herkubot, after hitting level four, taking three buffs, gonna visit this top lane and try to go for a very early gank, since Kevin's having already a little bit of a rough time. They stick harass him quite a bit, and he doesn't really have a word to spot anyone coming in, so this could be very bad for NIP. The thing is, Xtin can repel. He can usually get away very easily, although he's got himself caught very high up lane now. We'll see where the Herkibot goes in for this one. He's still sticking around there. He is going to come in, forces the flash out. It's not going to get caught out, though. Extinct does get away, but that's a flash burn. Yes, it is, and that's going to it's going to hinder him quite a bit in lane. So Kevin should be able to pressure him. As you see, he's already backing out. It looks like he's going to go back and actually buy a ward right now, just to kind of spot if uh, he's going to stick around here. But as we mentioned in the champion side, we weren't expecting NIP and SK to send their 2v2s to the same lane, but they currently are at this point in freeze. He's even in CS. He actually started a door in shield, which we didn't even mention just yet. So he's expecting a lot of a lot of harass here. Not to mention the regen off of that's gonna keep him quite healthy. Mix that in with the lifesteal that he has sitting at four percent. It's gonna be very hard to push out of lane. Yeah indeed. He's of course gonna just try and farm up as much as he can. We would expect Candy Panda to do a little bit more aggressive on him, but Deficio with those acroprisms can still be very dangerous. And if they can pin onto someone, we'll see whether they catch him out there. In the mid lane as well, we're also seeing it. And it is very even between the two. And you would, you would honestly expect that a little bit, but Bjergsen, once he gets at level 6 point, it should be very hard for Onslaught to really do much to him. As Herkibot is going to come in for a very sticky gank here. He wasn't spotted just yet, but NIP, they kind of backed away like he was, so he might be a little hesitant to go in here, but this could be very bad for NIP. 
because they do have the slows, they do have the ability to chase if they can dodge Aka Prison, which Ash, unfortunately for her, doesn't have an escape. That just shows how much focus they have. They actually pinged it, and they said they think he's here. Oh, brilliant, brilliant Acro Prison from Deficio. Beautiful. He was going through the Damashi standard slide, and he caught him mid-flow. Mid-flow, indeed. And that's exactly what you want to do as a Nami. If you can stop ganks like that when you didn't even expect them to be there, you prevented uh, Freeze from popping his Flash or his Barrier. That really puts him off quite well. You stopped a gank, though he is actually going for a little bit of counter on himself, but Maluna's doing the same, who is level 4 now. So you mentioned he was 1-3, to three, and now he's caught up a little bit. Maybe level 6 around the same time, but Herky, he's not done just yet. It's also getting low in the middle. Flash Force there, the Ignite also coming out from Bjergsen, trying to get aggressive on him. Ocelot is forced to back away. We do see a 3-man dive in this bottom lane. That's going to be the Hawk shot thrown out, just to make sure they have some alone time as well. And they will put some pressure down. They don't want to take the 2 down just yet, because they want to keep this freeze on vain pressured as long as possible still no help coming out from the jungler because we do see Seshwani trying to dive in towards that mid lane also already gone back they're trying to put some pressure down just a little bit of love taps on the turret a little bit of love taps and we do have Kenny Panda actually about 10 CS lead because of that gank you can keep it up to be uh, really well off but I, I love in 3.8 how we have mid laners the AP mid laners finally storing Doran's ring again where both of them start out with that in a couple of health pots and they're really able to, to just attack each other the entire time however Bjergsen's level 6 to the level 5 of Ocelot, so if he doesn't hit 6, which he just does right as I talk about it, then it could have been really bad for him. Well, he'd already, I think he'd already burnt the ultimate just in the first engage, and certainly burnt the ignite, though. Oh, well, Herkubot's going to come around and find Maluna. Maluna's already got that ward, though, to see him coming. He's going to slide on through, but he's already dashed off. And Ocelot coming around just a little bit too late. Top lane has just backed off. Actually, we saw Boots coming out now for Extinct. He's not really been having too many problems in that top lane. Kevin, in the meanwhile, looks like he's going to try and get that War Mogs out early on for Zack. And get very tanky very quickly and makes Extinct have a tough time. However, Extinct still does percent damage. So the more health he gets, still going to be increasing his own damage in the end. And Herkibot, he's really trying to make some ganks happen. He hasn't really been too successful just yet, but he's heading down bottom again. They're going to try to steal away the red, but it looks like Maluno, who had the time run because he took the, the small minions away, is going to be able to get here in time and stop us. Yeah, it's going to be on towards the Golems as well. Or will he start off? We do see Maluna is going to come around. He's going to see Herkibot. Hawkshot comes across. Everybody is there. And that is going to be a red buff stolen away. Will they give it to Candy Panda this time around, or will Herkibot continue to have it? Yes, he will. Smite used. Man, so the last time I remember seeing SK do this so well was against Evil Geniuses back at Gamescom last year. And they're doing a phenomenal job of really trying to hold Maluna back, though, because he's been, you know, visiting the lanes a little bit more and pushing the lanes in, he's not really falling that far behind in terms of uh, experience, as he actually is quite far ahead in CS. We are going to see the blue buff. That will be given across to Ocelot in a moment, but he's a long way away because he's having to fend off Bjergsen. Meanwhile, this bottom lane, we continue to see the volleys back and forward. It's a 10 CS lead again being built up. Freeze just slipping behind, but 10 CS between a Vayne and an Ash is not too bad. Yeah, consider you're going to outscale her by far as the game goes on. And to me, it's all about this mid lane. It's who can get some sort of advantage as Bjergsen getting some good damage onto Ocelot. But Bjergsen, I mean, we always, we always talked about him being the big playmaker for NIP back in the spring split. And he hasn't been able to do that these last two weeks. But if he can, having Extinct with, or, you know, to back you up, having Freeze to back you up, it can be, they can be a very deadly team. Look at Extinct. He's lingering off the side here. They want to try and make a play and maybe catch on to Herkipot. But Kevin coming down is like, well, he's missing. He could well be trying to interfere with your red buff. Wisely so comes from protects him and Herkibot continues to just keep that level advantage over Maluno. And more importantly, now he's level six, so these gangs could be even more uh, aggressive out of him. If he can just pull them off, he's been shut down quite well from all of these wards that have been placed everywhere. And here's to see if Extinct will be able to get a little bit of damage onto that top side. As Bjergsen with the blue buff actually has a tower relatively low. Mm, he's done a lot of damage. Also, of course, was backed away early on. And again, throws out that charm, lands the charm again, and just keeps the pressure on. That could well be the first turret of the game, tank game to go down. And I would... To, to have it in the mid lane is like the, the most weird mm. thing, because it's usually the outers that it happens to. And as Kevin, it looks like I can the minimap. He's actually going in on Extinct, but... Wow. Extinct took him down very low. Very, very low. In terms of CS, it's actually Kevin that's winning out that fight. And he has got the Rejuvi build. Speed, and he was just going to continue life steal and chugging through those health pots. He's not going to be forced away just yet. Herkibot sneaking in towards his mid lane, but Ocelot has already pushed up that wave. Both of the blue buff, of course, and in terms of CS, very even between the two. Bottom lane, though, Maluno, he snuck into the bushes. 
Oh, there's the ultimate. Ultimate catch is not quite on to Candy Panda. The wave this time will get waved through. The Aqua Prison also came out, put everything thrown at Candy Panda, and he survives, but it's going to be a battle of the balls in the mid lane, and it's surely Bjergsen who will come out on top. Flashes away from the Cataclysm, the defensive ball used for Ocelot. Ocelot did have to use the Shockwave to try and save himself there. But Bjergsen coming out on top really effectively. That's the second time he's done that. I believe back mm. in Moscow he did that on Kennen uh, against a Jarvan. But I was just thinking the whole time is that he picked a Jarvan, but NAP kind of countered that very hard with a very mobile team. Freeze, you can't keep in a Cataclysm. Bjergsen, you can't keep in a Cataclysm. The only person you can do it to is Defisio, and he's just a support. So it's not going to matter too much in the end. So SK does start to push his turret down. Luna's coming up from middle to help out. We see Bjergsen's not backed off just yet. He keeps throwing out those orbs, making sure ooh, the charm coming out. He will save the turret, but that's taken very low. That's about even now between the turrets. So good work from SK Gaming there, keeping the pressure on. We see the Aqua Prism just catching on towards Candy Panda, bubbling him up, but he survives through that one. And again, Ocelot and Bjergsen, they are not giving up on this fight. I mean, one of them, because the first one's still up for stakes. Mm. Or, you know, pick up to get that little bit extra gold to give your team that advantage. We were just talking about Ocelot being the big playmaker. It's kind of fallen off a little bit lately, more focused around Kevin and Candy Panda. But he wants to he wants to show everyone that he deserves a beer. Uh, he's one of the best AP mid laners in Europe, which is on, it's been questioned quite a bit a couple of times lately. And I want to know if he's actually able to 1v1 Bjergsen, though. I about setting up for Dragon right now. Well, we're going to see the bottom lane coming up to help him out, or certainly we're going to see Nif coming up to help him out. Candy Panda hasn't gone away. Things going down actually on towards Maluno. So they know that Maluno is a long way away from this one. It is going to be Ocelot, but he's got, he can't leave his lane because he'll give up the tower if he backs away. And they're like, look, he's heading down this way. They may be able to take the turret, but a dragon for the mid turret. I am not convinced by this. I think NFP would come out ahead in this trade, though. It looks like they might be able to head middle and kind of prevent mm -hmm. that from happening. But in the end, they don't get the middle turret. They get the dragon. And I'm looking at NFP's lineup, and I'm thinking, do they have the possibility to go for an early Baron? Because they have the true damage out of Nami. Or not Nami. As you do see Bjergsen going in. Full wow. aggression from Bjergsen. He should be enough. That's going to be first blood. Just the battle of who's got the bigger balls in the mid lane. And this time Bjergsen comes out on top. And who would have thought it would have been Ari <laughs> in the end? But now we see NFP going in bottom. The Nami Ultimate's coming in. Maluno's in proper pursuit. Candy Panda surfing the wave. The Aqua Prison comes in. Followed up by Maluno. Locking him down. There's nothing he can do to get away with that one. Oh, Flash was already burned in the last combo of those ultis. This time around, it worked perfectly. And that is the downside of being Ash against a Nami. You don't have the ability to get out of, you don't have a very easy escape, like the, the tumble out of Vayne, the, the, the net out of Caitlyn. And now with a Vayne behind CS, but with that kill, gonna have that Blade of the Rune King really soon as Herkybot's gonna just kind of maybe go for that turret, which is already relatively low, give him a little bit of gold back. Well, we're seeing, of course, they have backed off and Herkybot down that bottom lane, he's keeping the pressure on. Meanwhile, this top lane also, Kevin, look at that. Every time that poison gets right now, oh, that cocoon would have landed, that may well be. Kevin having his passive pops, but it is extinct. Really starting to sink the pressure on towards Kevin. He has to back off. He still hasn't got that warmogs. So everything is there to complete. Just needs to combine it. Ping meanwhile on the dragon. It's already gone, guys. The dragon was picked up by SK. Luna going to pick up red again. Level seven. And I was mentioning earlier before Bjerg picked up that first blood was. Will we see NIP maybe go for an early Baron? Because you have the true damage out of Elise, you have the true damage out of Bane, and then Maluno could tank it fairly easy on um, if you just built a little bit of armor here. So it wouldn't surprise me if they go for that. They're already 2-0 right now. They have the advantage. And if they can keep this up, they might get that early Baron, might be able to push against SK when they don't really want to defend against it. Hawk shot check in the vision. There is three members of SK in this bottom wave. They may be able to put the pressure on and really shove through on that turret. They have got the Siege Minion with them as well. So they will be able to put some pressure down. And Freeze and Deficio need to be careful that we don't get a Cataclysm on the head here from Herkybot. He could easily dive in. He's got everything available to him. There it is. There's a Cataclysm on towards Freeze. They do manage to volley him down. Wild Growth as well was used, but he didn't quite get the combo popped off. And Freeze managed to flash out in time. They still can keep that pressure on the turret, though, and force them away from the experience. They're going to slide through. They've caught the Deficio again. But just like that, the Aqua Prison comes down. One more shot. Could it be enough? No, it weren't. The Condemn was enough to keep Herkybot away. That was a beautiful Condemn as well out of Freeze. And in the meantime, we're seeing Maluno actually take away the red buff from SK. So he realized Herkybot was bottom, took that away from him, and is counter jungling Herkybot now when he was being, having everything taken away from him. And that is going to be the mid turret going down. Bjergsen in dominant form on Ocelot at the moment. He did only go 1 0, but overall that turret oh, is just going to get saved by Ocelot just at the last breath as well. A couple more shots would have been enough, but he hangs onto the turret again. And now we're seeing the rotation come around. SK Gaming, they're going to keep that vision in the mid.
And we do see Muno actually coming down bottom again. And without any outer turrets taken so far, I mean, you're not really going to have that lane swap come down at all. But I think this next dragon, when it comes up, NAP, they're going to contest it. They, before they actually hold this uh, roster change, they never would contest dragons as they only got five and let 24 go back in, in week three. Sorry, week two. But with this new lineup, they've been finally doing that quite a bit more. And with this early advantage they have, they could easily beat SK in a fight. Let's see. It is going to be Herkibar going towards the top. He may well actually go straight in towards Extinct. Extinct is going to back away from that one. Tribush Ward was thrown down. Back in the mid lane. It's the pajamas. They've got three members here. And they're not going to be able to shove in and race through just yet. Also, lot defensive duties so far. And Herkibot. Just off to the side as well as Candy Panda. Candy Panda's arrow is available. If anyone shows themselves, he may just go aggressive on this one. Meanwhile, the top lane, Kevin, he's getting pounced on by Extinct. And look at the damage he's putting down on him. That was 100% Zach down to 25%, just just like that. As we do see, SK, they're going to go for a push again. You should go take Coming that turret. turret. So they're up 2-0 to in turrets. They're up 1-0 in dragons. And even though NIP got the first two kills, SK still looking very strong. Absolutely fantastic stuff here. SK Gaming. Say 2 0 up in turrets, looking very, very strong. So, 16 minutes gone. Advantages are with SK. It's only a thousand gold though between the two. Has that pressure worked? The fact that they didn't make any roster changes is that working in their favor? Of course, all the teams that have made roster changes so far are picking up wins, so it seems to work for them. That is the top turret going down. We've seen Extinct really starting to bully out this top lane. Now we do see a bit of magic resistance coming out. Negatron Cloak being picked up by Kevin just to try and counteract all the damage coming out from Extinct. But Bergson, he is going looking for kills again. Will he actually find Hurricanebot instead? He may well do that. It's going to be the turret down. Oh, oh, my. oh, look at the damage sunk in there. He can't slide away from that one. And now Kevin's in trouble. Bjergsen immediately dashes through. He's going to have to use Let's Bounce to try and get out of this one. He does manage to bounce his way. Is the Ignite going to be enough? Cell Division is there as well, of course. And that is going to be the defensive ball from Ocelot. While that was all happening, two turrets, of course, fell. The top and the middle. So it's all square in turrets. And the goal actually swung back to NIP's favor. Wow, Herkibot just exploded in that fight. That was just the damage out of Extinct, who doesn't have that much AP, but with the penetration build he's currently got, with the Haunted Guys with the Sork Boots, he's sitting at 44 flat Magic Pen. Herkibot right now has 53, so pretty much almost true damage to him, and as you can see right there, he could not stand it, or he could not withstand that damage. And that is the third turret. There's 3 0 in kills, and now, let's get gaming with a 1000 deficit after being ahead in 1000. So quickly swinging around against them. Ninjas and Pajamas have all the outer turrets down and start to apply the pressure. The Dragon, of course, up in eight seconds. SK Gaming did take the first one, but NIP will pick up the second one once it spawns. They're just not sure on the time yet. And there it is, but are SK going to actually contest this right now? We have Bjergsen pushing middle right now by himself. We have Herkibot, and right now Nick coming in from the side as well as Candy Panda, but they're going to take it too quick. Well, the arrow is going to come in, but just off the side is going to be Bjergsen as well. This is going to be a very tight fight. Ocelot and Bjergsen actually fighting just off the side. Herkibot taking low. They have got Freeze down. Can that turn the fight around? But no, because that's going to be another kill coming in, and it's going to be extinct. They're chasing on towards Ocelot. Not going to be able to catch on towards him. While that all happened, Bjergsen was desperately trying to take down Ocelot, but he's just like, I am not interested in a straight up fight with you. I'm more interested in the team fight. It's turned out two for one. Candy Panda's gonna get launched on. Look at the damage, but the defensive ball is there. They do manage to get the knock off, and it's SK Gaming coming out 3-1 on top of that fight. In the meantime, you do see Bjergsen right now pushing middle here. The turrets are relatively low, so one's gonna have to back and defend this, and he might actually be able to get this down. Well, he's putting a lot of pressure on. He's got the minions certainly there. He can clear the waves out. He may be able to get it down. As you mentioned, we do see Kevin's gonna come in. He's gonna be launching himself in there on towards it to try and clear out that wave. Will manage to get the knock on towards Bjergsen as well. Slows him down. Not gonna quite be enough. Or oh, will they continue? No, they won't. The ping's coming down, but Kevin, ooh, you can't chase that crazy, crazy fox. And if you saw in that last fight, that was so well done by, by Kevin and Herkibot working together. Freeze was in the air more than he was on the ground the entirety of that fight, even with uh, the new Lulu ultimate coming in to knock him up. And that's exactly what they needed to do. Keep Freeze out of the fight. He won't get all that damage down with that Blade of the Rune King and that Zeal now. And because of that, they took him out. You have Extinct, who was trying to burst someone down, wasn't able to. And Bjergsen, who he couldn't 1v1 Onslaught because of that magic resist he has now. Yeah, very tight fights, though. Still. Definitely not in favor of anyone just yet. Just a thousand gold between the two teams. One turret separating them, which of course is that difference. In terms of AD carries, look at that. Straight across, both equal. 
AP mids, well, it's only about 600 gold difference. It's not enough to write home about just yet. Top laners, of course, that's only about 300 gold as well. And the junglers, more importantly, are still very even, despite the fact the big advantage that Herkibot had at the start. Maluno has definitely dragged himself back into it with those assists, helping across the board and, and keeping up the farm, honestly. He's been very strong in that field. So all across the board, still very much close. Everything to play for. Oh, here goes the Ash Arrow. Oh, and dodged straight away. But that was the ultimate burnt by Bjergsen as well to try and dodge out of that one. Can he try and pick something up at the start of this? No, he won't. That was, that was like Matrix-style dodging right there of Bjergsen. But still, like you said, ultimates down. That means SK might be able to have a little bit of an advantage here. Ooh. As they're grouping up, there's nowhere to spot them here. As the defensive ball is going on Kevin, he might go in on this, and they could use ultimates. Ball delivery oh, system my. works. Shockwave on Bjergsen just melts him where he stands. He does manage to get the wild growth on him. He's going to have to bounce away. Maluna is going to get melted down as well. The wave gets surfed out, but it is going to be SK Gaming with another two kills. Phenomenal fight out of them right there, just to jump in with the ball on top of Kevin. Bjergsen just blew up as fast as Herkibot did earlier in the top side. So now SK finally takes the kill advantage, and if you think about it, it was pretty much 3-0 for the majority of this game, but now they picked up five kills, only lost one in, in the entirety of that, as now also being chased here, and with the slow off of Nami, he might be able to go down. He is dead, Cocoon lands, Aqua Prison in, sunk his fangs in, and Freeze picks up a kill. Stuck around too long in that mid lane, but how many times have we said this in the past? Getting kills is one thing, but if you don't take any advantages from it, which SK Gaming had no chance of doing, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, uh, and, and IP with the, the comp they have, they, sh they can easily burst someone down if they're the ones to engage the fight. The middle turret's already very low here, so NIP, they lost one member, but they killed one, and now should be able to take this turret down. Candy Panda coming off from the side, but honestly, I'm not too sure he's in a position to go for it. Freeze does have to flash and cleanse away from that one. Deficio getting caught out. Sorry, it was shield up, not to cleanse. Freeze, he's going to get caught out. One jaw shot will be enough. Candy Panda with a kill. Extinct trying to go in towards Candy Panda, but he has to pop the barrier. Maluno now chasing in there. Bjergsen's going to come in. He's going a little bit too deep. He does manage to get the kill, but it may be to the detriment of his life, but no! Nip gets caught out, turns it into a double kill! How did that even happen? He went into the backside, I believe he ignited Candy Panda, then just walked out as Herky about tried to land that knock. So Bjergsen, he went down, coming back and picking up two kills, so in the end, it was a three for two in favor of NIP. Crazy, crazy fights, and that turret still stands <laughs> in the mid lane. And it is going to be the top lane wave that uh, Maluna is going to go up and clear himself out of. Deficio, though, He's been pretty vital in some of these fights. It was, of course, the Death by Grasp as well that was used by Bjergsen. I wondered how he popped down so quick, and just like that, he is picking up the kills. 3-1-0 now, Bjergsen, whereas Ocelot's still not quite able to encounter, or really put the pressure on as much as he can. He really needs that ball delivery system that Kevin or Herkibot have been using. They are going to collapse on towards the top, but Maluno just charges away on his ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, Orianna typically likes to outfarm their opponent, and that's how you get really strong. You don't really need the kills, so you can use the ball delivery system to your advantage, but SK, if N so NIP's working against the clock, I feel right now, that if SK picks up that runic bulwark, they're gonna have a very tough time killing anyone on the team unless they catch them completely off guard. And it looks like Herkibot will be building towards it very soon, but if NIP, I think they want to start some major team fights and just make make it so SK can't get to that point um, where they're very strong late game. Interesting second item coming out from Freeze as well. He's on the static shiv as well. We'll see how much of a role that plays in the next team fight. It's going to give him, obviously, the attack speed that he kind of wants, but he also wants that damage. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe an Infinity Edge stacking afterwards. And I guess we'll see what he does go in the end here. He's not up against a lot of armor. He's, mm. in fact, up, up against no armor at this point. So, that last Whisper is definitely not needed at this point. As Nip getting an Oracle right now, so they're trying to control this Dragon area, which they are doing quite well. Extinct will be backing away. Dragon's will be up in 15 seconds, and we're going to see another fight here. Nif may well be the one that walks into it. Yeah, and he's just like, nah, I don't want to go blindly into that bushes. Kevin looks like he's going to be leading the way. Dragon will be spawning in five seconds' time. So they are in place. They do get the ward on Maluno. So they have vision. That pink ward, of course, being placed. And SK are going to start the dragon off, but NIP are coming in to fight for this. SK needs to not group up right now because if Maluno lands his ultimate, they're going to get destroyed at this point. NIP, they're not going to let this like fly. They're going to go in here. They're trying to get the dragon. He's down to half health. And look at Maluna. Look, he's ready to go. Don't forget that wave could follow on through there as well. The dragon resetting himself a little bit. Oh, they are so tight together in this river area. If the two AD carries or AP carry get a little bit close like they are now, that's perfect for Maluna. 
and they could just back away and take the middle turret, but they do actually don't take it or don't steal it. They go and engage instead. Maluna gets taken very low. Can they? Panda fires off the arrow. The ball delivery system on Kevin doesn't really pull them in. Maluna manages to land a brilliant ultimate, and Bjergsen tries to follow on through that one. He's going to see Kevin. He gets cell division split off the side. Nif gets dropped down by Extinct. Bjergsen just cleaning house right now. Freeze is going to take down Kevin. It's going to be Candy Panda, last man standing. The Fang's coming out, and that is going to be a double kill for Extinct and the Ace. It is a 5 for one The Dragon went to SK, but the kills and the glory go to Ninjas in Pajamas. I will definitely be the first one to say that I thought that was a mistake out of NIP. Maluno getting caught right there. He ends up dying, but because SK engaged right there, because Bjergsen just blew everyone up, they're able to take that fight with the perfect Ace, and now they're going for a relatively early with Baron about 25 minutes in, and they have the damage to do it. They have Maluno up there to tank it, which might be a problem. As you see, he's already dropping a half health, but they're going to go for it either way. Oh, it's going to be a, definitely a tank fight going on here. Deficio taking damage. They're also all taking a lot of damage off this one, but they should have enough to just take it down. Any interruptions, though, would hurt them. But nevertheless, they get it, and all five members pick it up. See, this is the kind of play that you look at right now, and you think, would you have done that like a week ago or two weeks ago? Because we always we, we always talk about how certain teams look at LCS as like another scrim. They're not going to go into it and play extra defensive when they normally wouldn't. And it looks like NAP have kind of gotten a hang of that and started playing like that, like there's no tomorrow and not really caring that it's, you know, you know most teams want to back to where they're just to heal up, but it's think he might get caught here. Well, he's going to try and get slowed. He didn't quite catch on towards him. Glitter Dance will do. But straight away, look who's there, Deficio once again, throwing those Aqua Prisons out and forcing SK to back away. They may be able to get themselves a tower, but it's only going to be an outer one. Yeah, one tower for five deaths in Baron. I don't think that's an even yeah. trade at all for SK, but they're going to take what they can possibly get. Because like we mentioned before, they need that. Uh, they can't even forward. get that. Bjergsen's there. No, yeah, Bjergsen's like, no, nope, not happening. Get out of my turret. It's maybe an outer turret, but they're not giving it up on it. And SK Gaming forced to back away again. It's a 3,000 gold lead, and more importantly, a Baron buff in Ninja Pajamas. Let's see what they do with it. You know, I'm thinking about something we talked about. I believe it was you and me last week about NIP. In terms of when Bjergsen came into the team, like the test finally had weight lift off his shoulders. He was mm. able to play a lot better. And then Bjergsen was pretty much always the man to go to to carry the team. But now, if you look at the score, he's pretty much dead even with Extinct. Freeze has three kills as well. They're pretty close on CS. It's like, it's like they have three Bjergsons right now almost at this point. And it might actually be a really scary team as, a, as the league goes on. Well, Extinct was always a fantastic mid laner back when back when he was on Curse EU. So not surprised to see he's doing very well. Been absolutely dominating that top lane. Although saying that, Kevin's 3-1-4 as well. So, But this mid turret, look at that, with a Baron up. NIP, I wouldn't want to be standing around that turret too long because it just needs two gentle breezes. And we'll see if NIP goes for it. They're trying to bait in that bush towards Raid. They have an Oracle. They're on the aggression here, but it's going to be very tough. So NIP, they need the Moon to land a perfect ultimate like in that last fight of Dragon. If that happens, they can just full on engage, take out SK, and they just back away, let that turret fall down. But this is the real point. Can they see just inhibitor turret down? And to be honest, I don't think they're going to siege it. If anything, they're going to fight. They're, they want to kill SK, and with that, they could finish the game if it happens around this inhibitor turret. Yeah, you can see there's a big wave along the bottom that's going to sort itself out. So it seems the top inner turret is the one they're going to focus on. They're going to head in towards their ninja in pajamas. With this Baron, they have the advantage over SK right now. And SK actually looking like they want to defend it. I don't think they can. I think this might be a mistake if they do, because they're all grouped right now with, for a perfect Luna ultimate. It's all about him landing. He's, he's buying his time. He's he's really being reserved with it. He wants to land a perfect one, because if he knows if he lands one more of those, they're going to win the game at that point. Yeah, and you've got, with Ocelot and Candy Panda continuing to stand next to each other, it's just baiting Maluna to just flash and dive in there. Hasn't got it quite available yet. You can see him, though. He's just off the side on riding that boar. He wants to get involved. This is what makes it even more deadly is that SK can't control the vision around here. You see bot lane's pushing her very hard for that second turret. That's going to fall very shortly, but they can't defend that top inner turret if they can't keep the vision because they can just flank them from the backside. And NIP, they're like, all right, we'll back away from that. The we'll take your bottom, bottom turret. Yeah. And we'll get a little bit of extra gold income on top of that as they're already sitting or having two members sitting at 1,000 gold right now. And NIP, they're, they're doing a very systematic finish. They're not trying to go for anything too crazy. Extinct is just melting that turret down. Those spiders are scary right now. Absolutely destroying the turret. And just like that, they're going to rotate round. They've got around about 10, 15 seconds left on that Baron. So that's not going to be much use. But they are going to go straight back towards that top turret. SK Gaming kind of caught in between. Not too sure what to do. And NIP playing the map. We've talked so many times about 
when you lose that first inhibitor, like the chances of you coming back are so slim. I believe it's at 93% right now out of all the games that's happened in Europe, uh, in Europe for LCS, including Spring Split. But with that Baron falling away, will NIP still want to fight here? Oh, they've managed to catch Herkubot. They throw the spider towards him. Doesn't do a great deal of damage. The shield defensive ball, all enough to carry Chin down. Hawkshot does find the whole team. Will they collapse on NIP? No, they won't. They're going to be happy to just hold their ground. They fell 5,000 gold behind in that whole Baron effort where they completely got wiped out. So it does mean the SK Gaming are back into defensive formation, farming it out and trying to hang on, but realizing they don't have a lot left in their jungle. But what they do have, though, is a lot of major items being completed. So the, the Bulwark, or not the Bulwark, the, the Aegis is completed right now, so he's very close to finishing the Runic Bulwark. We have a Death Cap coming in for Ossot, which if he lands a perfect ultimate, he will shred NIP. And we have Candy Panda with the IE and the Phantom Dancer, so he has some pretty good damage at this point, considering he's not really up against a lot of armor on the other team. So SK, they're not out of this just yet. They easily can come back from this, and it's all about if NIP will make the mistake and SK taking advantage of it. Well, they have to make the right catch, and that shockwave has to be perfect. And at this moment, and don't stand next to each other is the main thing. Ocelot and Candy Panda got to avoid each other. Dragon is up, and it's going to be NIP that's going to take it. There's nothing that SK going to do about that one. It's going to give them for free, which will stretch them to a 6,000 gold lead. And NIP, from the fights we've been seeing uh, most of the time, it's about if a cocoon lands or a charm lands, they follow it up with one or the other. And it pretty much means you're locked down forever. And I'm looking at Candy Panda, and with this Sejuani ultimate, if he gets caught with that, he's going to die. So I'm, I'm curious why he's actually not running cleanse at this point. Uh, obviously, we'll be able to save a little bit more than, than a, a barrier will, but we'll see if he can position well because they still have the strong initiate. I mean, Ash has the strongest initiate in the game, but they haven't been able to make plays off it. I mean, I think he's only shot two arrows this entire game. Yeah, well, it hasn't been quite as Genjuresque as it was so far, although he missed one. To be fair, we are waiting for see where this next engage is going to come from. I'm wondering if it's going to be when the Baron respawns. SK are going to have to fight for it. There's no way they can let NIP take that one for free like they just did with Dragon. But they don't have any wards around it. They have no vision around it. And NIP, they're about to ward the hell out of it. And luckily for SK, though, they have double uh, double AP composition. So Baron, he applies a magic debuff to you where you take more magic damage. And we've seen also against Evil Geniuses back at Gamescom where he got a triple kill with his with his Orianna just because of the pure damage or the amplification of the damage. So with the Zac, with an Orianna, they easily could wipe NIP. And if NIP doesn't play this right, like they could lose the game just off of, you know, being a little bit cocky and going for Baron. Well, we've seen rash Barons catching many teams out in North America and Europe lately. 27 seconds, though, on the spawn. Ocelot's going to have the blue buff, but when it comes up, you can see NIP. They're starting to position for it, so SK starting to react. They have got an Oracle, I believe, on Nif. Yes, it is. There it is, just coming into your screen. But they have to be very cautious about this play. Here we go. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little nervous right now because you know the fight's going to break out around Baron. As NIP then clear out the wards. Baron's going to be spawning right now. And SK, they're, they, they have a choice. Do they want to fight for Baron or do they just want to push middle? And it looks like they're going for the latter of those two and force NIP to react to them. Bjergsen's not with them. And SK, I'm not sure if they realize that yet. They're still unsure of where he was. He was up in the top lane. And they do use the volley so just to back away from that one. SK wasn't quite sure of their positional advantage. Now they see Bjergsen, and they're probably thinking, damn, we could have probably fought for that one. Would have been a great opportunity, but it wasn't to be. And NIP are going to try and take this advantage to try and clear out the jungle of wards that SK have just managed to put down. The thing is, the, the, the top lane for SK is pushing. The bot lane for, I believe it is actually NIP, is pushing. So they're pretty much getting traded in that position right now. And right in the meantime, SK is backing away. And they have to be very careful here because the ultimate's coming out of Maluno and not really landing perfectly. Not really landing either. That's not caught on towards anyone. Candy Panda taking very low. Has to flash out. Wild growth was used. Is it enough to try and help him escape? Maluno taking very low. Kevin comes around the side. Wild both. There's going to be the shockwave. That's going to be Bjergsen going down. Great play from SK Gaming. They've got two kills. Can they get away from this one, though? Extinct He's going to land that cocoon. He will get dropped. That's going to be one picked up for NIP, but they're going to have to back away from this one. Cautious, cautious stuff from NIP. SK, really good escape there. Yeah, look at me. Look how low Kevin is right now on your screen. He has no health left. I believe it was about 100 at that point, but a two for one for SK when they were already down that much. Very phenomenal play out of them, and it was about NIP committing so far into the back line of SK where, you know, Herkibot was sitting 
with the team of NIP, like chasing, <laughs> chasing his own team practically. And great job by them to pretty much counter that. Bjergsen, he, you saw the damage that Ocelot can do, and with that death kept coming out, that was that was just from that. And they were able to burst him down. And the thing is, bursting Ari down, considering you have your ultimate to escape. This is this is dangerous play from SK. They saw that Oz Extinct was down the bottom lane. They're still pinging him, saying he's still here. He's backing away now. Oh, can the Nif actually caught out there by Freeze, condemned onto the wall? Is it going to be enough? Here comes Maluno. We're going to see Maluno coming in. Maluno hasn't got his ultimate available just yet, but it is coming up very soon. Freeze is going to cause problems, though. They're still trying to keep this Baron alive. They can take Kevin's going to have to back away, and now they're going to go in. Is this the mistake by NIP now, though? Because SK Gaming are going to come back in there. They're taking the Baron very low. They've got it. Ninjas in pajamas are going to try and turn this one back on its head. And SK Gaming, that was such a risky play. I don't know why they went for it. And like, thanks, guys, but actually the fight not be, might not be over. Maluna's come in. He has his ultimate almost available. The wave goes through. Maluna's ultimate, like you say, it's available in a couple of seconds. It's going to get launched out there. He does manage to catch on towards him. Freeze comes in. Ocelot pops the shockwave. Does manage to get one. Gets the second as well. It's a double kill. Kevin bouncing around the Aqua Prison, catching on towards him. Ninjas in pajamas still taking very low off this one. That's going to be the passive being popped. That will be a kill. It's the Bjergsen that takes down Nip, but that is only a two for one. The Baron buff on a lot of members of NIP still low, and SK Gaming, they reset the clock for a little bit longer. I'm looking at that fight and wondering, was that a mistake by Maluna and Freeze to get so far into the enemy team? The Os or the Osla ultimate, the ultimate of Osla was just phenomenal locking down Maluna and Freeze. They able to capitalize on top of that with the Jarvan knockup. Uh, NIP, three members still with Baron Buff, still have it on your AP carries, so it's still relatively good, but SK, the thing is, look at their items. They're slowly getting in there. You have the Void stuff now done for, for Ocelot, you have the Abyssal Scepter and the Sunfire Cape done for Kevin. Like, they're finally catching up in terms of items, and if NIP, you know, keep throwing a couple of kills over to them here and there, SK can just pretty much win these fights hand down. I think Extinct's having a laugh if he thinks someone's going to go that far down the lane to try and wipe out the wave. Candy Panda's kind of thinking about it, though, but he's he's been hanging around in that tri bush. No, I don't think anyone's going to quite fall for that one, Extinct. He has got Hawk Shot as well, so he's definitely going to check things out with that Candy Panda. There goes the Hawk Shot. Checks out towards the blue, actually, so Nif can put the wards down. It doesn't Ooh, spot him. Ooh, it doesn't spot him. Extinct's still waiting. He wants oh. to sink his fangs into someone. It's not going to happen. He's just going to wipe out the wave. He's just sinking into a candy minion at least, get mm -hmm. something out of it. And we do have the void stuff actually done for Bjergsen as well. He's going for his Zonius right now because he realizes he's pretty much getting killed right away. He needs some sort of escape mechanism. And with the with this Baron, I mean, they easily could still fight right here. Maluna's ultimate's going to be up right now. So I'm going to go for Dragon, get a little bit of more gold. And I believe actually go home and buy soon because Extinct has 2,000 gold at this point, so he could go for his Leandries. Yeah, he hasn't actually been back because he had to run straight back up. Once that Baron fight started, he never had a chance to actually go back and spend his well-earned cash. He's still not going back. He's going to make sure he gets the golems first. So he's going to be buying some sizable items. May well be that the Andrews, like you said, looking like probably will. Ocelot, meanwhile, in that mid lane. He's been really trying to help. Those shockwaves have been on point in fairness, so he's been doing the job. And SK Gaming, they're not out of it yet. Still 7,000 gold difference, 5-3 in turrets. 14 and 11 in kills, and again, with that Baron buff taken by NIP, they're not really making a great deal of use of it here, here either. So, it is SK are quite happy to sit with status quo right now. Yeah, I mean, I think NIP realized, like, Whoa, we need to take our foot off the pedal right there because we almost just got in a completely bad position. Luckily, three of our members weren't there for the fight. So, you know, they're, they're taking the time. They still have a huge advantage, 7,000 gold at this point. They, they don't want to throw this game. And honestly, I, I actually respect that. I kind of like that because it shows that they're in control of their emotions at this point. And still, they're going to go for another turret at this point. Top turret, I think, will go down here. Bjergsen throwing the charm out to the bush. Actually, wasn't quite sure it was there. Has got the rest of his team collapsing around him. And SK, you've got to be careful because they're a little splintered at the moment. They aren't really fully in position to try and defend that one. And sure enough, the sixth turret of the game goes to NIP. And here's the point of, are they going to keep pushing? And it looks like they might just try to shove the lanes back in yet again. Baron's up for a very long time right now, so they can't really be prepared for that. They took the last dragon. Only thing they can really deny away is that blue buff away from SK, but looks like actually Bjergsen will do that. So he's going to be able to take that. And after this point, it's it's pretty much just another Baron. Like, we're just going to wait for that point unless someone gets caught off of SK. Well, they've got about a minute left on the buff right now, I think, around about looking at the timer. 
And it does mean, of course, we're going to have a little bit of a wait, a little bit of a dance. I don't know what's going to go on, really. NIP are going to back off, probably going to get themselves a dragon again in a minute. But it looks like that bottom wave, that's going to get wiped out. All the lanes are going to get shoved up to SK. They're going to keep that gold farm going. And NIP, well, they have no reason to rush through this one. We're coming up to the 40-minute mark. It's the longest game of the night so far. Two more games to follow this one. Not really the one we'd called, though. Yeah, who would have thought the NIP SK game would be longer than the EG Lemon Dogs game? Yeah. <laughs> Not us, that's for sure. But nevertheless, NIP are all pushing up this bottom lane. Are they going to think about sieging it? Because they caught SK out a number of times with some very well-placed ultimates, and they've layered them very well as well. But of course, as we've just proven in the last fight, if Ocelot can land that ball delivery in the right point, it can turn the fight on its head. The thing is, they can't really siege the turret down just because of the initiate out of SK. So if they want to do something, it's pretty much a straight fight under their own turret, uh, led by Malunus Ultimate. I actually wouldn't be surprised if SK, you know, potentially goes for a fight here because if they catch someone, they're going to die just with the whole combo that SK has. Well, they realize that they forced NIP away. They're all going to go back and buy. Yippee! Let's see what items they get, guys and gentlemen, because they've stacked out the gold. We are going to see Zonia's Hourglass coming in for Bjergsen. He's just going to be annoying, isn't he, in the next fight. We'll see how that works out for him. That um, has to be the key. Like, that, that had to have been something they were waiting for, just to get the Zonia's, because that means he can dive in and not be worried about being you know, killed really, really early on. Well, we'll see whether it is. The Zonia's Hourglass on Extinct as well, so that's the double Zonia's. Going to cause problems, whereas not a single one actually for SK, not a single Guardian Angel for any of the teams either. We are starting to get towards those big, scary fights where people will get 100 to 0 in a couple of seconds if they're caught out, which is why, of course, the teams are being so very cautious. Look at the Fisio score. I, I, I just looked down and was like, oh, 1 0 10 hasn't died yet, so his positioning's been very spot on. He's been landing some really good Aqua Prisons as well. He's going to be clearing up the words. So it looks like the next fight will be around Baron here. And at this point in the game, 41 minutes in, honestly, either team can win a fight at this point, just because of the items they've built up. Yeah, the last whisper's been completed by Candy Panda as well, but in terms of AD carries, Freeze is going to be doing a lot more damage now. Yes, that static shift, the IE that you called out earlier. Looks like he will be going for a last whisper off the, that pickaxe. His damage is going to be ridiculous. The problem he has is... Can he get a position to really use it where Herkubot can jump on him? You have Kevin who can jump on him. Then you have the ball, the arrow, the Lula knockup. Like, he's already, he's been caught the last two times in these fights and blown up pretty early on. And it's all about him positioning properly here. Well, Herkubot nearly caught out by Cocoon there from Extinct. Just were flung past at the bottom of the screen. Does a quick little dance and realizes how close he was to being melted because that would have certainly triggered a very fast Baron, which will be up in the ground 15 seconds time. Ninjas in pajamas have full vision of it. They're certainly in the dominant position. Oh, no. Ooh, I tell you what. Oh, Herkubot's so lucky to put that ward down there. I was actually thinking he might use his uh, standard to spot them out, but that would have been the ideal, pretty much, initiate for NIP right here. Uh oh, they're going to charge for this one. He is going to flash. Oh, but it's not going to land. And that's a big ultimate wasted there by Maluna. Didn't catch on. A couple of flashes were used, but that will be down for a while. I'm trying to think if that was more beneficial to NIP or SK because they got two flashes out of the carries of SK. Mm. Though they're down the ultimate out of Maluna, which is like their big CC that they need for these fights. I think actually NIP will wait it out, wait for that ultimate to come back up, because obviously it'll be up before their flashes are available. Yeah. And that's the big point where SK, they want to make something happen right now, it looks like. That's why you can see they're going to try and push it a little bit and maybe try and take control of that Baron Pit. The Oracle, of course, on Nif will clear out all the wards and we're going to have standing stances all over again. Look, Maluna's actually going aggressive. Looks like Ninja Pajamas want to fight for this one. They've gone for Herkibot. They do manage to lock him up there. Bjergsen's trying to put the damage down. Nif taking a lot of damage as well. And SK forced to retreat. Now that she really pulls you out of NIP, knowing they didn't have Luna's ultimate available. It's already halfway off cooldown, though. And NIP, it's pretty much just, uh, they're just trying contesting that Baron. It's like, both have oracles. We want to get the vision of it, because you know the next Baron fight's what it's going to be about. Though, SK has a lot of things in their favor at this point. Top and bottom are both pushing, so someone on NIP is going to need to back to clear those waves out. And when that happens, SK can go for that very quick Baron. Maluno, like you say, that ultimate almost available. They've caught Kevin out. He's had to back away. Cell Division is available, but he doesn't want to get it wasted. That was a defensive ball used, but really, he's going to have to back all the way to base and try and get back in time. Deficio, meanwhile, he's wiping out those awards with his Oracle. And that's going to buy time for NIP. They may well have enough to try and start that Baron off before Kevin goes back. Kevin luckily does have home guard boots, though, so he'll be, there, be, back, uh, be back very quickly. 
but you're definitely right. I mean, SK with four people trying to get a ward in that Baron pit is gonna be very difficult. And there you see right there with the bottom lane of SK constantly pushing. They take a turret from that, and Bluno's going in again. He's thrown his ultimate out this time. He has caught Candy Panda and straight away. Oh, Bjergsen gets pulled in. Shockwave wasn't enough to take him down. It's gonna be the double kill picked up by Freeze. Now Herkibar's gonna dive in there. That could well be the triple. No, it's gonna be Bjergsen that picks that one up. They're on towards Ocelot. That's gonna be another Zonia's Hourglass. Extinct the Ignite will take him down a faint. No, it won't. And they do back away. And that was a three for zero for Ninjas in Pajamas. They're in prime position now to take the Baron, but they're gonna have to go back first. It looks like definitely Bjergsen already did that. He's gonna clear out that bottom wave. But NIP with control, I mean, having the Oracle down for SK, they're gonna have to face check into this. And it looks like SK is just gonna give it away. They're gonna go for Dragon instead. Well, Freeze definitely doing the job. And honestly, it's been Maluna that's been initiating perfectly so far for NIP every single time. Kevin's simply taking the Dragon, trying to get any little advantage that they can, but it's all about the Baron for NIP. Let's see what they do with it this time around. They couldn't siege down the inhibitor turrets last time they had this. This time, though, I think they're going to be a bit more aggressive with those Zonyas, but they are both on cooldowns right now. Definitely. You saw just the power of them uh, in this last fight, where Bjergs almost got blown up by the, the ultimate out of Ocelot. He got knocked down about 10% health. Pop the Zonyas was able to actually escape away from Herkivot, and then Extinct doing the same thing with that Ignite. So, one of those come up when Maluna's ultimate's available, there's definitely gonna be a fight breaking out, and I think this actually might be the last fight of the game at this point. Like, we have really long respawn timers. Freeze has a GA now. It's gonna be very hard for SK to actually take anyone down on NIP at this point. Yeah, they're definitely in a, a bit of a predicament, it's safe to say. SK Gaming are up against the wall, their legs spread, and NIP are ready. <laughs> this, is, this is about the only analogy I can think of. I'm just talking about searching, man. Your mind is in the gutter every single time. I don't know where you go from this one. Is that why honestly. you looked at me with the grin? No, there was no grin there at all. You're making it up. Ninjas in pajamas, they're looking strong, and they are gonna go straight up the mid lane. And keep an eye out for Maluna. When this ultimate goes off, SK, they're gonna have to concede this away, but Kevin actually is prepared to go in. Mm. And he's not. No. Oh, oh, oh my Zonyas. Oh, oh what? what are you doing? Also, wow. I think he thought the timing on the Zonyas was wrong, but even I knew that was up for a little bit longer. And that is a big, important ultimate down, and NIP are going to know that. They're going to come rushing straight through that mid lane. Look at that. The turret getting dropped down there. That will go down. Now they're straight towards the inhibitor. Maluna's ultimate isn't available, but of course it doesn't matter because they've taken the inhibitor turret. I went back to look at that just to make sure if they had vision of it, but they did. And it still unfortunately didn't work out for them, but that is a huge mistake of MSK losing the inhibitor. And now NIP with Baron buff still available, they can go for a push on this top side. Wow, so NIP right now, one in hip down, and they got a giant stack coming in the top lane. They can follow this one through, and I don't think SK Gaming are going to be able to do a great deal to stop it. Shockwave's back available in a couple of seconds. They're going to have to have the very best of initiations here. Kevin with Let's Bounce is going to have to really interrupt the entire team. Bjergsen and Freeze. Definitely going to be the focus targets. Ocelot now, Shockwave available. Has to try and catch this just at the right point. SK doing a good job at clearing the waves right now, but honestly, did NIP only have to wait because the super minions are going to start coming up that mid lane and somebody from SK has to deal with them. Exactly, Demon. And that's just making me wonder if Nip is clearing out all these wards, they could go for that crucial engage at this point because Kevin, he has a let's balance the whole ball delivery system combo if they want. And pretty much they've waited too long. Now Bjergsen has his own available. Maluto has his ultimate available, so pretty much they can't even engage at this point. He's, he's tanking the turret. He's happy to hold it out as well, Maluno there. And again, that turret down to half health. Candy Panda and Ocelot, oh, they stood right next to each other there. This is just perfect for Maluno. He's just waiting for that exact moment to charge in, land that ultimate, and they will both be decimated if they can catch in the right place. You see Candy Panda still taking the damage. That inhibitor turret ever so slowly going down. Super minions now will be coming up. They are on the middle of the map, so once that next wave gets there. Ocelot also has to go across. It's Candy Panda that's going to deal with it. They know there's four members defending. They have to go for an engage here because either they're going to lose a second hitter in the game or they're going to lose their Nexus turrets. They need to make something happen here. NIP, they're pretty much at the exact same point where they're going to go in here relatively soon when one member backs away from SK, which Candy Panda just did. We could see the engage coming out. They do see Maluna actually getting caught out with a good stun. He did manage to slow down a little bit, tanks up the turret for a little bit longer. But look, the minions, they're on towards the super, uh, the Nexus turrets. The super minions starting to come in there. So they're just holding them down. Maluna actually taking a good burst of damage there, but Candy Panda almost had a mana 
Mana. So he's actually getting to the point where he may not even be able to fire that arrow. Oh, we might even see the Feast take off the engage with the wave over the wall. We will be able to catch him. Moon will be able to get in and land a perfect ultimate. But look at all of these waves. They're pushing in. Bottom uh, bottom lane has, I mean, it's all over that turret. Yeah, super minions in the mid lane. Minions on the bottom lane. That's going to be an inhibitor to it. The arrow comes out, lands on freeze. Is that the right target? They're going to throw the ball out there. Shockwave wasn't used, though. And Ocelot just holds on for a little bit longer, but that neck, that inhibitor turret in the bottom wave is getting massive pressure on it right now. SK Gaming are in trouble, and it's going to be ninjas in pajamas that actually back away. There's going to be the inhibitor turret, the bottom wave taken out by just minions. And Demon, I think we're going to see a fourth Baron of the game for NFP to finish this one out, because they can now just bait SK into a fight here. And actually, honestly, that was a really good engage by SK and Ocelot. I have to give him credit. That was a smart play to not pop his ultimate because he realized he could have gotten Freeze's J, yeah, but he wanted to get the perfect position to catch every member of NIP, or if he missed that that ultimate, if he used it at the wrong time, then NIP would have finished the game. Well, I think he realized that Freeze had still got, of course, his flash available, so if he'd have just got out of it, which he was probably waiting to do, he would have been fine, and then, boom, you're losing your best ultimate in the game. So, like you said, held on, delayed just long enough, and sure enough, Baron is up, Dragon's up in a minute, Baron's up in around about two minutes, and you're right, NIP are going to hold this one out. <laughs> and look what, awesome. what Bjergsen's picked up too. Going a little bit of Pharrell Lord on us with the, with the Hextech Gunblade. Yeah. So it's a, it, it's a really good item because it gives you some really good statistics. Also the slow, it means you can't really miss your Orb of Deception, which I don't think it misses much anyways. And now I'm going to take away the blue yet again. And he's going to push out middle as far as they possibly can. And if they don't, the thing is, like, they want to stop this Baron, but they need to protect their base till that inhibitor is available. And I believe that Baron will be up before the uh, inhibitor is. Yeah, they're going to take away the dragon, the blue buffs, everything in their advantage will be with NIP. And the gold, of course, is going to continue stretching their way. 8 4 in turrets, but no surprise there. They've had full dominant control. They're going to keep those waves shoving up there. Three members actually of NIP down this bottom lane. Don't forget that inhibitor is completely exposed, and SK have to react to that one. And that's going to pull them away from defending those super minions in that mid lane. Inhibitor will actually respawn soon as well. But the Baron, you can see, is going to be up in 50 seconds. But all of NIP are on this bottom lane. This is do or die right now. They need to go for the engage really soon. They have to stop NIP from taking this inhibitor, or that will be game for them. And Extinct getting really overextended at this point. They have to be very careful because SK has the damage to burst you down. I like this play, though, from NIP. They're not worried. They're thinking, Baron, 30 seconds. Let's not worry about that. Let's get the inhibitor. Let's go for the objectives. Too many times we've seen teams fall away from going for a Baron at the wrong time. And this may well be the right fight for NIP. But we do see his Herculebot that's going to engage. He tries to go in there. There's the wave. There's the shock. Is it going to be enough? The shockwave hasn't been used by Ocelot just yet. You can see that Ocelot does use that Zonius. He gets dropped. Didn't get a chance to use Shockwave. Ninjas in pajamas are going to take victory here. They pick up four kills. Can they get on towards the final one? Kevin gets back onto the fountain. It doesn't even matter. It is going to be the Nexus to it. They go for the inhibitor goes down just as the middle one had spawned in there and it's going to be ninjas in pajamas Bjergsen staring down Kevin on the fountain and it will be NIP that take the victory here against SK Gaming that three wins on the bounce since their roster